think is rubber latex. It is different. Um, rubber latex is can sometimes be synthetic, but most of the time it comes from a rubber tree. Um, rubber trees produce rubber, but beneath the bark is actually where the latex comes from. So there is natural latex and uh, synthetic latex. This is has the natural latex in it, but it actually has more. It is um, watered down natural latex with ammonia in it. So if you're allergic to latex, don't use it. And if you're allergic to ammonia, I would also not use it. If you have any smell sensitivities, um, sorry, this stuff stinks. But it is really neat. It makes this cool flesh. It's stretchy. It's pretty durable. This is quite a couple of layers that I've let dry over a couple of days. Um, but it's still pretty thin. For thicker la latex, it'll become much more fleshy, but it loses a little bit of its stretch. But if you need some flesh in your work, it's really convenient. Um, a any SFX movies that you see, scars, any buildup is usually made out of latex. It's also commonly used with other things to build up animatronic skins. Um, a musical group that makes full masks out of just liquid latex uh, is Guar. They're a metal group that do really cool stage performances with their big masks. Um, but today I'm going to show you how to make a weird flesh glove, which sounds really strange, but I know in sculpture we use a lot of hands. And why use a plaster hand when you can make a really scary flesh glove? <laughs> that sounds so strange. So what you're going to need is clothing you do not care about. So I made the mistake of wearing one of my favorite shirts so I have an apron on. But if this gets on your clothing or in your hair, it's going to ruin it and rip your hairs out. So don't don't let it get in your hair or you will be bald. And that will be your life choice now. Um, I'm going to have a paper towel by me just in case it gets anywhere. You need your actual liquid latex. This is from a Halloween shop a couple of years ago. This type dries clear. Um, some of them dry a little bit more flesh-like. Um, I like Ben Nye's a lot, but they're kind of expensive. So, but they have a thicker consistency to them. You're also going to need a like sponge that you do not care about. If you use your favorite brush, it will be ruined and you will be very sad. You're also going to need baby powder to stop it from sticking it to itself at the very end. And if you don't want to take a billion hours, I could use a hair dryer. So what you're going to need is a clean, dry hand. This is my clean, dry hand. And it's really simple. You are going to... That was too much. Oh no. And then you're just going to spread it evenly across your hand. And make sure you get in all of the nooks and crannies. When it starts drying, it's going to get a little, like... A little... Later, I guess, you're going to be able to feel it when it starts to dry. Um, and I will show you when this layer is drying. So from here on, the audio gets really funky, so I'm going to go ahead and voice over for you. So here I was showing that it, the first layer was dry. We're going to do a couple more layers here. I did about four, four or five, and then you see it's thick enough that I feel comfortable to take it off. I'm going to baby powder it because latex wants to stick to other latex so your hands will get stuck together. And the baby powder helps that. I'm making sure that I feel comfortable moving now and that it's not breaking up at all. And then I'm just going to take up a spot in the corner and start peeling it off. Um, I will usually pick around the wrist because that's... I can do that without ripping anything. And then I'm going to carefully take my time and take it off making sure to put baby powder in between everything. And this is what it looks like. You can see it has some really, it picked up a lot of detail. It's really gross, but I hope you enjoy latex. Thank you.